Joshua Free, and I have been asked to essentially do a small mini-series on the background and history of the modern Mardukite movement, which is essentially uh, explaining how this uh, modern Anunnaki revival has come to be. So what we're going to get into today is actually based on an article that I wrote for a book called Guardians of the Gates. This is essentially a companion guide that is now available for uh, solitary seekers or group leaders since our primary, uh, what we've called the Necronomicon Anunnaki cycle, is essentially complete and it completed at seven volumes and we about a year and a half ago I was here on YouTube explaining that uh, our, our home offices, the, the Necronomicon of ours, is actually quite large and we've spent a year and a half exploring it I, based on the cost at the time and the resources available for interpretations and uh, putting everything together in something coherent uh, it took essentially a year and a half to get that out there in two volumes and it is now actually available in a single volume it's called Necronomicon Anunnaki Legacy and this is actually a oversized uh, hardcover 777 page volume and it encompasses uh, the seven Libros of the of our uh, Mardukite Anunnaki Necronomicon cycle and then Guardians of the Gates is uh, just released this year 2011 and uh, again it, it's basically a companion that encompasses the entire cycle uh, whether someone's a newcomer or an adept wanting to form uh, a study group or chapter of the Mardukites on their own uh, essentially invaluable. So uh, what we're going to uh, do is explain kind of where my background is and uh, you know because not a lot of people really know much about me I work uh, with uh, several Mardukite Chamberlains more directly um, my local group also uh, the internet forums uh, which is uh, basically based from our council and uh, a prior Prior to my work with the Mardukites, uh, my domain of literary contributions was really strictly involving like practical occultism, ritual magic, as it's kind of come to be interpreted by by the Western world. Um, you know, for that cycle of ventures, I, I wrote under a pseudonym, uh, several actually. One that I'm probably most identified with is Merlin Stone. Uh, during the, the 1990s, the, there was this really strong public interest in the occult New Age topics, and um, it was something that uh, I readily identified with, you know, something uh, concerning the establishment of practical magic, ritual spellcraft, these kind of, these kind of systems. And uh, the Mardukai Truth Seeker Press uh, now actually released for its 13th anniversary edition the Sorcerer's Handbook of Merlin Stone which uh, is available at necrogate.com or mardukite.com. This is actually what it went on to become the, the basis of uh, pretty much my, my writing career. Uh, it's, it became the basis of Merlin's Magic, and uh, we're going to be doing a new uh, like 2.0 version. It's been like two and a half years now. A 2.0 version of the Be a Wizard series, essentially based on the Sorcerer's Handbook of Merlin Stone. Uh, so that's kind of where things began uh, for me back back then. Uh, the separation of authorship using using these pseudonyms was was an intentional act because during the earlier years, uh, this exploration, networking, this anonymity for me was kind of critical, and uh, it's allowed me to merge now with the the Mardukite work, which is. Uh, not so much focused on uh, what people would identify as like ritualistic spellcraft and whatnot. It's more about Sumerians and Babylonians and where all of that stuff originated prior to be broken up in the Western world. A new vision for the movement and the contribution I would make 
emerged in 2006. I had just completed the work for what is best known as the Book of Alvin Ferry, it was later integrated into the cycle as Druids of the Necronomicon. It later became clear that the work was going to have to come from the underground and not from the realm of light in terms of reaching people and creating a modern movement. Now, seeing the alliances that were kind of later formed as a result, it became clear that the majority of those who were centralized in a similar pursuit were also operating in a similar way. Now, the word underground can be exceptionally ambiguous, although images of silent crime and illegal hate group printings come to mind, in the occult paradigm the term underground has a completely different context. What is available to the general public in the realm, even if it be something concerning new age or counterculture, it's still shrouded in politics of the realm of light, which is controlled and geared toward a particular aim that has nothing to do with something new or counter anything. The enlightenment found in the realm is wholly different from that which is found or brought from the place which has yet to be conditioned, and will instead bring true light to the ignorant darkness. Now, with the Book of Elven Fairy being completed, the lingering feeling of something about to happen could not be shaken. While I was originally intending to preserve the more elvish and druidic theme aspects of the tradition for later incorporation in the organization, the truth of the matter became quite clear. If the origins and sources of the said Western magical tradition were to be reached, the legacy would have to be recognized directly, in ways that had not been reached before, and the seekers would have to be directed elsewhere from the British Isles and the more familiar shamanic rural traditions of, of Europe and such, we were headed into the fertile deserts and wastelands where few had tread. Now, in order to make the transition from Druidry and the New Age and European ritual spellcasters back into the depths of Sumer and Babylon, many pieces were kind of required being connected for folks to really get it. Now, the mystics know that everything is connected, but few realize that even in the more pragmatic aspects of culture and even physical genetics, things are indeed connected, and they can be traced back to a unifying center. For the purposes of modern humans and the development of civilization as we know it on the planet, the unifying center at the heart of Mesopotamia would have to be shown to all. Thus, with a two-year deadline, the monstrous volume titled Arcanum, also referred to as the Great Magical Arcanum or Magic and Mysticism, set the stage. Now, the privatized release of Arcanum on the 2008 summer solstice officially launched the effort begun in 2006, and to this vision was given the name Mardukite. The promise was then made to have uh, the Mardukite Chamberlains an active public organization in 2009, and it came to pass. So I immediately began to work with those closest to me on the possible ways which the work could be relayed. It had already become clear that the first and foremost intention needed to be a common ground, which is to say a con concise collection of, of the tablets. And of course the story did not begin in Babylon, it was simply a turning point, and the most relevant for my own purposes. So we chose to begin the story there, from a time when the legends being born by the priests and lore keepers of Naboo and elsewhere in southern Mesopotamia where the